Greetings, and welcome to the third set of videos on lists. In the previous set of videos, we talked about how to create one and two dimensional lists. And in this video, we're going to take that a little bit further by showing you how you can build really big one dimensional and two dimensional lists using files. And then we're going to show you how you use these techniques in order to solve a variety of problems. Creating lists, as you may recall, is fairly simple. Uh, if we just want to do a quick review, if I wanted to make a one-dimensional list, let's say, for example, I wanted to make a list of your assessment scores. The way that I would do it is I would make my list, I would create a variable, and then I would create the brackets. The brackets indicates an empty list. And if I happen to know the scores beforehand, I could just add them here, right? So maybe someone got 100, and 90, and 85. And remember that the other way that I can do this is if I use the append command, I can also just append straight up um, a score to the end of the list. So this is useful when we need to get values from the user, right? We, whatever they type, we append to the list. So if I run this, no big surprise, it generates a list and it puts the values in. So for a two-dimensional list, what we would need to do is, this is more like a table, right? So we would create a variable assessment table and it starts off the same way um, an empty list and each row becomes a list in my table so for example I could say that the person who had a hundred was our boss right and then the person who has less than a hundred that can be me that's safe for my career uh, <laughs> so uh, there we go so in order for this to work, you kind of have to have this mental model of what the table looks like. Notice how uh, if I run it here in Thony, you'll still see it as one line. I like to write them this way so that you can sit there and go like, this column is clearly the score, this column is clearly the name. All right, and everything uh, should be good. Using one and two dimensional lists, it depends on the type of problems. One dimensional lists are really great when you need to only store a single type of information. So in this case, scores. And two dimensional lists are outstanding when you want to store lots of information about an entity. So maybe their score, their name, what squadron they came from, you know, their hometown, all that stuff. You can put it into as big a table as you want. To date, we've basically been building lists by getting inputs from the user. Basically, every problem we've done in the labs looks something like ask the user for the number of values, get the many values, shove it in the list, right? Or keep getting values until the user types the word done, right? Either way. Um, this is only going to be practical when the user is only having to input a small number of values, maybe like 10, 20, that sort of thing. Users might have patience for that, but it's not going to work if we have hundreds or millions of entries, right? So very similar to file IO, there are times when we need to analyze large amounts of data and we can't depend on the user to type on all the values accurately. So today I'm going to show you how you can use files again, but this time we're going to use them to construct really big lists and then we can do complex data analysis on it. To help us through this lesson, I'm introducing a new data set to you. It's called the Traffic Data Set. I downloaded it from data.org and uh, you can actually download it from Canvas. Uh, Basically, this data set counts the number of vehicles that cross various intersections in Chicago, I think. And then um, city planners use that information in order to figure out where are the dense areas in town. So this is what the data set looks like. And with all comma separated value file uh, problems, uh, we kind of have to tell you what it all means. So for example here, uh, this is the address, this is the street name, this is the, uh, the date that the sampling was done, and this is approximately how many cars were observed on that day. So uh, there it is, all right? So the first thing we want to figure out is how do we construct, how do we convert this into some sort of uh, list, right? And it kind of depends on what problem you're solving. So I'm going to show you in generically how we do this. And then in the follow on video, we'll talk about different types of problems and when we use lists and when we don't, all right? So I'm going to clear all this out. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to follow the file I.O. rules. So for example, if I want to open this file, uh, first I have to make sure it's in the same folder as my um, program. Uh, and I just happen to know that it is. And then this is when we do, we open the file and we set it to read mode. So this should be completely review, right? The file contents is going to be when we uh, read the whole file as one big string. And then we get the lines in the file. And that's when we go ahead and we uh, split the file contents by the new line character. And again, if you're having trouble remembering this, uh, 
go back to the video on file IO and look at the quick reference guide. It's all there. So if I was to run this right now, actually, uh, if I do a loop for line in lines in file, I should be able to print out the line. And this is the minimum viable product, right? I, I can test this. Great. Looks like it's uh, printing everything out. And then remember, once we have a line, we want to get each of those individual columns. And the way that we do that is just by splitting the line on uh, some character. So in this case, we know everything's separated with a comma. So my split is going to be based off of a comma. And now if I was to print columns, you would see that for each line, I basically get a one-dimensional list that shows me everything in that row in the file. So let's say I wanted to construct a table. So all of this stuff is uh, uh, reading each line in the file. This is opening the file and getting the contents. So let's say we want to construct a very simple table. And for now, what we're just going to do is we're going to save the date and the number of samples. All right. And I'm just picking that as an example. You can do whatever you want. Uh, so I'm going to make a traffic table. And we're going to start it off as being blank. Uh, so this is my empty table. And then inside of here, I'm going to create my new row. So every time I get a row from the file, I'm going to construct a new row for my table. And it's going to be equal to, and in brackets, I can actually go grab what I need. So let's say it's columns, and then we have to count 0, 1, 2. That was the date is 3. And then here, the, uh, um, the amount observed is four. So I'll just go like this. And then using the append, I can do this. Traffic table dot append new row. And when I run this, um, actually, let's go ahead and see if we can, we'll print up the traffic table when we're done, just to make sure that it's uploading it correctly. So here we are adding a new row to our table. So if I run this here, you'll notice it looks kind of complicated, but you can actually see for each row in my table, you can see it's the date and then it's the value. Here's an important reminder. Uh, remember these ticks means it's a string. So when I pull from a file, it assumes that everything is a string. I have to tell it otherwise. So I know for ex example that the second value, the second column is going to be, this particular column is always a number, so I can convert it to a number. Uh, the date, I'll just leave as a string for now. So if I run this again, you'll see I have the date as a string and the number. So I've just shown you very quickly how you can build a table uh, using the values from a file. And again, I can have as wide a table as I want. I can actually import everything. But what you're going to learn is when we look at problems, we oftentimes don't need all the information from the table. We just need some of it. So there's a little bit of craftsmanship on designing the table that we need, going into the file, getting the information we need, and building it. And in the follow-on videos, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So thanks for watching. Yeah, take care. See you soon.